saving people money for over 75 years. By your Carolina Ford dealers. By Gatorade. Win from within. And by Bojangles. It's bow time. Marvelous day and night. Here in Louisville, Kentucky, as you take a look at our starting lineups, brought to you by Food Lion, Robinson, Bibbs, Hill, C, and Outlaw for Virginia Tech. Louisville with only nine scholarship players themselves. Snyder, Mitchell, Johnson, Adele, and Matthew Yang will be the starting five for Quick Rick's cards. Today's game will be officiated by Roger Ayers, Patrick Adams, and Tim Nestor. Hey, Tim, you're going to see a lot of the same people out on the floor for this team, both teams. I mean, Louisville down B.J. King and Tony Hicks in this game as well, so it'll be a short bench for Rick Pitino. King got a bruised thigh earlier in the week in practice, will only miss this game. Uh, the, the story on Hicks has been really sad to think about that broken bone in the hand. As you see very quickly a three ball go down for Ty Outlaw, and it's three to nothing Hokies. Coming into the game, 33 made field goals on the year, 25 from three, so it doesn't look the part, but you have to get a hand up on him. Mitchell just inside the arc, and it's three to two. And I'd expect a little bit extra pressure, a little, bit, a little bit deeper than Virginia Tech, maybe try to pressure them up, take some time off the clock defensively, get into their legs some. We may see Matt Galloway play a little for Buzz Williams today. He would be the eighth guy, but basically they're a seven-man team right now with the loss of Clark. That one goes crying, and it's pulled down by Louisville. Yep, yeah, you know, Tim, I mean, when you get right down to it, uh, there are a bunch of teams in the league that are playing seven guys yeah, right now. You're right. You know, I mean, Absolutely. they've got bodies, but they're playing seven guys. Hey, the number two team in the country is playing seven guys. Uh, that's true really across the board in college basketball today. Frank McGuire would be proud. There's a missed reversal from point blank range there for Jalen Johnson. And if there's an area where Louisville would really have an advantage. Oof. Nice work defensively with that swap by Matthew Yang. It's going to be in the interior on both ends of the floor. You see it there with the block, and then I would expect also on the offensive glass. Mitchell rattles home a train. Uh, he really carried the load when Snyder was out with that hip flexor injury, and they had other guys who stepped up and played. But uh, it's a, a pretty formidable backcourt for, Indeed. for Louisville. Uh, Snyder getting back really at just the nick of time, given what happened with D.J. King this week and the news on Tony Hicks being what it was. They're hoping to get him back maybe by ACC tournament time. That three ball from Bibbs. And this is a very good overall shooting team in Virginia Tech. And uh, Rick Pitino doesn't like what he sees right now on the early tip. Yep. The, they, there's Buzz Williams. Had some travel issues getting in, which can happen from time to time. Uh, the charter company could not get the pilots into Roanoke in time. They wound up taking the school plane, which could only fit about, well, the seven guys the, that are going to play. The team. <laughs> and then the rest of the guys on the team, the, the sports administration staff and the broadcasters, who managed to get in. They're fresh after the bus arrived at about 2.30. Well, let's quickly get our keys to this game, brought to you by Carolina Ford. Well, uh, and it's uh, for Virginia Tech. We'll call them the Magnificent Seven because that's what they're down to, and those guys are going to be playing heavy minutes throughout the rest of the year. It's just the way it is for this team, and they've coming off two big wins. And then for uh, Louisville, defend without fouling. I talked about this team being a very good shooting team. Uh, Virginia Tech really gets to the line well. All right, many thanks to Mike Burnup and uh, John Laser for giving us the um, itineraries that the Hokies faced. <laughs> well, we got our information on the issues they had. Could not get a shoot around in for practice yesterday as Donovan Mitchell gets that one to go. You know, it does have an effect. This time of year, it's one of those uh, maybe understated stories through the course of any season is travel issues that we all have, but teams have them as well. You want to you want to irk a head coach. You want to have <laughs> a foul up in the travel itinerary, oh. whether it's buses, hotel rooms, no planes, whatever. That just frosts them no end. But well, we share that as broadcasters. <laughs> and another three going down from Ty Outlaw. That's two for him, the red shirt junior from Roxborough, North Carolina. He's, you know, he's, he hasn't taken a ton of them, but you, you, he shoots it well enough that you have to 
respect him and drive him off that line. You see a lot of matchup zone just because of the lack of bodies for Virginia Tech against Louisville. They've worked against it this year, this week in practice. Dang, Adele did not get that one to fall, but they do get a recycle, and Mitchell pumps. Oh, the bank is open on Saturday in Louisville. Well, I, I, you know, that that timeout for Rick Pitino is all about the defensive end of the floor. He's not, you know, his offense is running just fine right now. But uh, he's got a he's got a he knows he has to find shooters now Listen, they defend the three better than anyone in the country li limiting the opposition to 28 percent But already his team has yielded three of them from downtown Shot clock winding down and up against it. It does not fall for Ahmed Hill. No real post presence out there for Virginia Tech. Uh, C is the only guy, and he's mainly, uh, he sets screens in that offense, so they're going to space those four perimeter guys out. Beautiful trade. Quentin Snyder. We are raining trays in the Commonwealth in the first four and a half minutes. Both teams. Over 14 shots taken, nine have been threes. How about that move? Straight line drive, which Louisville has been susceptible against. Justin Robinson taking it right to the rack. When you defend the three so well, you'll yield those. Patino talked to us about that prior to the game today. Here, Donovan Mitchell, you see the early long two that gets him off and then knocks down a couple of threes. But Tim, so far, he's uh, perfect in this game, including getting a little help from the backboard here early. Ten of their 13 points, he's perfect from the floor. And you see the improvement. I mean, that's, that's immense when you think of where he was just a season ago from that spot. That's working on your game and listening to your head coach, the Hall of Famer, who knows a thing or two about what it's going to take at this level and at the next. Well, and it's it's not often that you 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 know you, you find a guy like that who makes that big a jump, but yeah. um, you know the the three, but from freshman to sophomore year, you expect that kind of improvement. Hey, how much fun was it today visiting with Rick before the game and going over the old times from 30 years ago in Providence when it all began? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, he the amazing thing was he talked about how much he loved those two years yeah. there. And, uh, His most memorable, he said. Yeah, and I'm sure it was, uh, it was very tough for him at that age, or maybe it wasn't because of the opportunity. Yeah. But, you know, to leave that behind in what he had built there in a very short period of time and in a situation that a lot of people advised him not to get into. Indeed. Mitchell lost his dribble that time. Scrum on the floor. They try to get it by Mitchell wrestling it away. We get a tie ball, and that hustle allows the ball to stay on this end of the floor with Louisville on the alternating possession. This is just stick to itiveness after Mitchell lost it. Yeah, I said usually the first guy on the floor gets it, but unfortunately Robinson couldn't find anybody. But the, uh, you know, it's, it's early in the game, Tim, but the best news for Virginia Tech is they don't have a team foul at this point, and that's the, the one thing that can get them in trouble. Shot clock did reset because there was a loss of possession. Up until that point. Up until that point, that's right. <laughs> and, then, no, and then Robinson gets the foul on the hold. Just that quickly, and Buzz Williams gets a kick out of that one talking to Roger Ayers. Well, you don't want to pick it up on an inbounds play like that with the guy going away from the basket. Mitchell! You know, some teams aren't ready to play at 1 o'clock games. Some guys aren't ready at 1 o'clock games. But certainly Donovan Mitchell got his warm-up right today. Did he ever? Keep an eye on Seth Allen being challenged right now from a defensive standpoint. He's been shadowed beautifully so far by Dang Adele. Has to give it up late in the clock again, and that three ball does not fall for Robinson. And it's Adele's length that is giving Allen problems right now, that he's able to lay off him a little bit, protect against the drive, but then he can get a hand up and contest a shot. Mahmoud! Nothing Allen can do about that inside. Just into the game, the young man from Cairo by way of West Oaks Academy. 18 to 10. 
of their post players are going to be their best offensive threat down low. Utilizing the ball fake, you're going to see a lot of that today from Outlaw and others around that area. Oh boy, that could have been a four point play as Allen got his defender, Jalen Johnson, airborne. He will get three at the line. Yeah, and here it is. You, you, you can't get caught fighting behind that screen. It was a terrific screen by Mahmoud, and the, here it is. It's just, he's just playing over the top. You know, Seth Allen at 6 1. There's not much he could do, but on the other end, Allen makes a great pump fake on a three and draws that ill advised foul from Johnson. Well, that ends up. This is ending a run that was at 1.10 love with the free throws. Uh, Seth had eight points on just two of five shooting, but big free throws late in that game. Kind of woke up late in the game against Pitt, but his performance against Virginia was stellar. Well, that's, you know, that's why you talk about today's game. I mean, this, I, I think, I think Virginia Tech is solidly in the NCAA field right now. Agreed. But they pick up another signature win, and uh, it'd be a virtual lock. You know, you see them, if you, they end up 10 and 8, 9 and 9, you know, I, I think they're in the field. No question. A book in victories, too, like the one with Virginia and then the one against Duke early. That Duke win now shining more brightly than... It did in January and late February, given what Krzyzewski's team's been doing of late. There's a turnover as Seth Allen got a little excited too quickly. A look, time to look now at the nation's top 25, brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. You'll see five of them there. Number 25, Notre Dame is rolling against uh, North Carolina State today. More on that situation, the firing of Mark. Mark Godfrey will talk about that a little bit later on today. Yeah, of the uh, you know six teams in the top 25 overall, and, uh, and but there's going to be a lot of jockeying in those rankings because those teams are playing one another going down the stretch. Uh, the ACC tournament is going to be loads of fun when we get to Brooklyn. Adele not there, stays with it though in traffic. Too strong, and it's pulled down by Outlaw. You know, Spalding's a terrific offensive rebounder, just couldn't convert. Allen again. Really nice swing of the basketball. Bibbs making the extra pass. Spalding on the floor along with Adele. There you see Snyder from downtown, but it doesn't fall. And once again, Seth Allen on the move. You know, when you look at the numbers, it, uh, Virginia Tech a better shooting team, but uh, similar tempo, you know, similar scoring. It's what the defense that separates the two. Well, this guy hasn't been heard from, and it's going to be a tough afternoon for him with guys like Spalding and Anas Mahmoud. But Virginia Tech on a six to nothing run. You form certain habits with the players um, with discipline of being on time, being early, working hard, being diligent, being honest. A lot of the virtues you try and teach your own children you teach as a coach and you understand that they haven't formed all the habits yet so you're trying to help them create positive habits and that's one of the joys of coaching well and that's what's gotten them to the hall of fame and, uh, and and those are things tim you know shooting and some things on the court come and go but all those things he talked about yep. you can be consistently good at every day allen with the shot clock winding down hoists it up and it's pulled out of there by mitchell Leaves it for Snyder, who drives baseline. Tipped in by Spalding. Yeah, that was a neat. Those are going to be easy things, and as long as it, as Louisville starts attacking the basket, Snyder gets up, uh, shaking his shoulders a little bit. But the interesting thing with Virginia Tech, you know, if a team's going to shoot a lot of threes, they don't get to the line. But they've gotten there as well in this game this afternoon, and uh, Louisville has not taken the free throw yet. That one's. Off the back iron. Virginia Tech now 4 of 8 from 3, 0 for 5 from 2. Spalding again, rejected. Beautiful work defensively. And the three ball for Adele doesn't go, but Spalding clears again. And a recycle for Snyder. And uh, Mahmoud will be called for the foul. Got him with a body 
trying to go for that last rebound. Well, it's going to be a long day inside for Outlaw on the day, but Outlaw, the terrific block on that play, and it was the pump fake that allowed him to come in from behind. You know, Bibb slowed it up just enough for him to get back in the play defensively. Well, Ty Outlaw is doing the best he can to help Zach Lede, who is outnumbered by the bigs, Spalding, Anas Mahmoud, and others. And he's really, I mean, that's it's going to be a long afternoon for him with the height and length that they have. That three does not fall for Ahmed Hill. And I think, that, you know, I, I think if Virginia Tech shoots, continues to shoot at a high rate, that Rick Pitino is going to have to extend his defense out to cover that up a little bit. But if they start missing, he's going to be able to sit back and then pack the zone in a little. Mitchell gets one heck of a pick from Mahmoud. Good ball reversal to the wing. And it does not fall from deep for Jay Henderson. The kid that's only played 27 minutes all year. And Haviland is giving you a chance to attend this year's New York Life ACC tournament. Airfare, accommodations, and tournament to every, uh, ticket to every game for you and a guest. It's all courtesy of Haviland. Enter today at the ACC.com slash Haviland. Well, and Justin Robinson, he's still shaking it off. He got absolutely leveled on yes, that he screen. Did. Sure did. <laughs> nice work underneath by Matthew Yang. Yeah, that was like running into a Mack truck. Now, Mahmoud is the, the widest guy no. in the world of anything, but if you're not expecting it, yeah. it's just as effective and it hurts just as much. On the day, shoved that time and fouled by Jay Henderson. I mentioned only 26 minutes this kid has played. Lake Highland Prep out of Orlando, Florida. But it's not uncommon for Rick Patino to go deep into his bench and have effective play. The guy that won that game at Syracuse the other night, Ryan McMahon, got all seven points in their overtime, and here he comes right in now. onto the floor. Yeah, you would think with Mitchell that uh, maybe Earl, and you know, you're going to see these substitutions by both teams in, in the first half. Unless there's foul trouble, they may not go that deep in the second half. Well, that one was deflected, and Matthew Yang takes it away. See, I love that, putting a big on the inbounder like that. That's what he does. He lit it up at Syracuse in the OT, and he knocks down his first trade today. Well, he's quickly becoming a cult figure here in Louisville. <laughs> yeah. He only played five minutes in that game, Tim, but impacted it and arguably won it for him. Did he ever? Wonderful story today by Steve Jones in the Louisville Courier Journal. Something we used to see all the time and rarely see anymore. Feature stories on game day in a college town. Nice work by Allen using the glass. Yeah, you have to keep him away from his left hand. That's his strength. So good and strong going that way. David Levich also on the floor. The senior from Goshen, Kentucky. He negotiates into the paint. And that one goes rolling off the rim. Bibbs controlled it into Seth Allen's hands. He's going to try to get past Levich and McMahon. He does, but he's rejected by Spalding. McMahon on the other end waits for some help. Well, and that's why they can. That's why they can defend the three so well. They've got those shot blockers inside. What a find! McMahon dropping the dime, and then the baseline blast by the seldom used Henderson. How about the? Uh... The uh, new backcourt coming Woo! in, dropping a quick five on Virginia, Twet, on Virginia Tech. And that gets the crowd, the very appreciative one here in Louisville, up on its feet. High arching off the window, a silencer from B Justin Bibbs. Junior from Dayton, Ohio, makes it 27 to 20. What a strong drive, and he had uh, he had both bigs flying at him, Tim, on that play. It's still concentration right there. Great interior passing, high and low, and then right back to count it and a foul. Spalding playing high low with Matthew Yang. That's beautiful basketball. How good is that? How good is that? Oh, so enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm was, I was a little better with my um, lob wedge yesterday than I was playing um, the Mellow Mushroom three-point challenge today. <laughs>
By the way, our thanks to Gary Klim, our director who lives here in the Louisville area, for taking care of Rob Reichley and myself. We had a wonderful day on the links, G-Man. You should have been there. Yeah, I was prepping for the game. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew you'd slide that one in. <laughs> uh, would have made the Virginia Tech practice, but they had travel issues. It happens. Seth Allen, not there. And it's pulled down by Matthew Yang. Louisville's lead is 10 with just over seven to play here in the opening half. McMahon with the dump down to Mathieu. And I think, you know, as long as this lead stays out there, that uh, he'll leave for the McMahon and Henderson. Let them play. Give yeah. guys give the guys a rest. Why not? Let Snyder get some time on the bench. In traffic. Lede. Count it. And one. Well, that's one of the few times that Zach Lede has been in a position to be facing the basket with room in the lane. Well, I think this is what he's going to have to do, Tim. I mean, he's really tried to slug it out, posting up inside. He's going to have to pull out onto the perimeter. And he's got the ability to put the ball on the deck like that and also shoot the medium-range jump shot. So uh, I, I think that's where his scoring is going to come from. Jalen Johnson got the foul. His first. All things considered, with the pace of play being where it is, a relatively foul-free game only. 14 fouls against the Hokies and three against Louisville. And Lede cannot convert the old-fashioned three-point play. 76% on the season, so usually pretty good at converting. McMahon remains at the point. He's, he's getting a lot of respect from Justin Robinson. He's not giving him much room, and they're trying to set some screens for him to get some space. Now on a mismatch, he makes a move, can't get it to go on the bounce. He had Ty Outlaw on him, but could not get past him. Well, the good thing for Outlaw that he did was he drove him off the three-point line, that played him well enough that forced him into a mid-range shot. Now Outlaw with a blow-by. Yeah, and that's uh, that, that straight line drive you talked about earlier. It's something if you're going to go out and jam those shooters, you got to give something up. And uh, but and but Virginia Tech's spacing is so good, it's tough to get help. Rick Patino talked to us about that at the start of the game today when we visited with him. He says we've been susceptible to that all year, but comes with the territory when you defend the three. Johnson's jump hook not there. Pulled down by Lede. Allen end to end. Well, that was a marvelous move by Robinson. Well, and that's like you, I, you put that on Matthew. And he never got turned around. Was it big when you're running down the floor? Once you hit half court, you have to get turned around and see where the ball is. Nobody identified where Allen is. And Robinson took advantage and just blew past the Louisville defense. A little too much concentration. And McMahon. Boy, he had some contact there. Wanted some help, but Tim Nestor didn't give it to him. Patino can't believe it. And a reminder that today's coverage of ACC basketball being broadcasted on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the nearly one million men and women of the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe. Glad to have you with us and hope you're enjoying our broadcast. Mitchell back on the deck now. Snyder. And then uh, Buzz a little upset. Well, you can see Patrick the, Adams on that one. Is, uh, you, you can see the intensity in the shirt, yeah, Tim. Yeah, yeah, you think? <laughs> so times like these, I really want him to put his jacket back on. You know, I really do. Adele, strong move by the sophomore from Melbourne. <laughs> the buzz is a piece of work. Great to have characters in the game again. He's a throwback. 
As you see, the three ball dropped through again by Ahmed Hill. Five of ten now on the game from behind the arc for the Hokies, keeping them uh, right in this ball game. It's a rarity for a team to shoot this well from deep. Alley oop time. Dang Adele, the recipient from the lob from Mitchell. And it's, uh, but uh, you know, if you're if you're Buzz Williams, you're content to you'd rather give up a dunk than a three, and on that end of the floor, if your team continues to shoot this well. Hill. Good ball reversal. That's just outstanding passing. Ty Outlaw after the whip around. The ball movement, the key there. Ahmed Hill with a tremendous laser-like pass. Not only to against this Louisville team, but coming to their building and shoot this way in the first half. And uh, you just get them into rotation, and the spacing again so good. They, got, they get open looks. Snyder created some space there with the bump against Robinson. And the lead is four. Virginia Tech is now five of their last five from the floor. They trail by four. Again, dribble handoff pass. That's a thing of beauty. And that's just a thing of beauty to Robinson. The way they created the opening there, Mike, is, is a, an essence of the game offensively now. The dribble handoff with space. It's an essence of the game that's really taken over college basketball. Well, and uh, you know this this team doesn't seem any worse for the wear at least right now early in the first half still have their legs shooting deep shots hit their last six the Hokies Adele again on a drive And I think we may have had a foul underneath we did well, here you see at the two ends of the floor, the beautiful lob to Dang Adele, and then down the other end, Virginia Tech all afternoon has been entering with the three ball. That one off the glass. For uh, Virginia Tech has been the three ball. Half of their field goal attempts in the game from behind the arc. They've made seven of them so far. Excellent line, excellent spacing. Uh, this is all that Buzz Williams could ask for offensively. There you see the number is 7 of 12 today. That's enough to make it uh, a sweaty afternoon for the opposition, too. I know he takes those late showers prior to games. Maybe that has something to do with the um, somebody, adrenaline flow. Somebody, the manager, please give that man a towel. <laughs> Mitchell, a quick response from downtown. Well, Gary Williams and uh, Jimmy Patsos would be happy to know that the tradition lives on with the help of Buzz over there. Yeah. <laughs> Pete Gillen wasn't far yeah, off. Yeah, you're right. You know, Absolutely. G Gary used to sweat through the soles of his <laughs> shoes. Another three from downtown. That's just keeps on keeping on for Justin Bibbs. 39-38. This has been an enjoyable game to watch. Our job is a lot more fun when the ball goes through the hoop. Not this time. Well, it's been very cleanly played. Not a lot of fouling. Good pass inside by Allen. Look at that trigger to the wing again. How about that? I'm at Hill. And even, you know, that's what Lede offers you. We talked about him getting a little frustrated in the post, but the defense collapsed on him, yeah. and that's what allowed the open shot. And the 21-9 run finally gives them the lead. Snyder took a step. That's uh, a walk. But it's this passing, Mike, that has just been the key, I think. Well, here's the way. The, th the tough thing is you have all those bodies inside. He's got to see outside of four white jerseys, and he finds his guy. He knows that's another bank shot. How about that? I mean, and uh, you think of 28.4, that's almost the best in the NCAA. It is the best in the ACC. This is this has got to be incredible. this got to be the best half that any team has had no against question. them all year yeah. behind the arc. And by the way, playing the Karam shots, we've seen them from all over the place today. His style points for Oof. those. And the Jack Gibbons flashback. <laughs> hey, you brought that one up on your own. Yeah, I did. I... Allen with a beautiful feed to Lede. And there are only two seconds on the shot clock. And that's a byproduct of that defending the three. Well, yeah, and that's, you know, that's the decision that Rick Pitino makes. All right, they've continued to knock down threes at that rate. I'd rather play two ball with them than have them getting open looks. 
Snyder with a teardrop. You know, that's, that's, that's going to be there all afternoon for Louisville. You know, it's, it's a matter if they can shut down the three-point shooting for Virginia Tech and, you know, make them contested two-point shooters. Buzz is going to take a timeout with 2.6, the discrepancy between the shot and the game clock remaining here in the half. Well, coming up at halftime on the Hardy's Halftime Report, we'll preview a new show from Raycom Sports and the ACC called The Cut Above, the legacy of the New York City basketball area and the ACC. Our own Corey Alexander is on hand and talked with Charlie Scott, Kenny Anderson, Bobby Crimmins, Julius Hodge, all at the barbershop in Harlem to talk about the city playgrounds and the players who came down south from New York. Mike, I know uh, as an old Connecticut young man, not far from the big city, you heard all about the streets of the well, city. Well, I was, I tell you what, I was recruited by the guy who may have been the forefather of all of that with Frank McGuire. Yep. You know, you think of that 1957 North Carolina team comprised of a lot of guys from New York City. And yep. it was called the Underground Railroad from mm -hmm. uh, from New York down the to Chapel Tobacco Hill, Road, yep. down to Tobacco Road. So yep. he was uh, he was the godfather of all of that. Uh, the subway to, from the city to Tobacco Road. 43-41, almost holding it for the last shot. They'll have to launch with two left on the clock, and that's going to be a bailout foul from Mahmoud. With 9.4 remaining, and that's number two on Anas Mahmoud. Well, I, you know, you have to think that this, uh, you know, the Duke win aside earlier in the year, that this team is playing with as much confidence as they've had in a while coming off these last two wins. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're loose because they feel like they are in. I mean, that's what we're seeing, the byproduct of, and another foul, this one by Spalding inside, and they'll have an opportunity now to get to the free throw line. You know, you see sometimes, I think, Mike, we've been doing games together for a long time, clubs that are on the bubble and they play with this degree of stress that that is noticeable um, and I think once the team feels like okay we've done what we need to do they they play with an expression of freedom and, and that's what I'm sensing from Virginia Tech and Patino's having to deal with that now well and you know quite frankly too you, you got seven guys everybody's going to get playing time so right. you don't have players worrying about that a lot of happiness and, and uh, a lot of happiness. but let's let's see what happens that shooting percentage in the second half and uh, right. what kind of adjustments the Louisville makes snyder at the buzzer off the window wow that was a little too easy for buzz's liking but Virginia Tech still ends the half on a 24 to 13 run. Yeah, this is just uh, the the rim has been wide open and it's been wide open for for both teams. Uh, it's been a terrific offensive game. I don't know if either coach is happy with their defense at this point. We shall see if the next 20 minutes are a reflection of the halftime conversations that each coach will have about that aspect of the game. 44 to 43 our score here at the break the Hardy's halftime report is coming right up ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico saving people money for over 75 years by food line raising standards without raising prices how refreshing by your local Chevy dealers and by mellow mushroom The local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Ah, the sweet smell of a Louisville slugger. When you picked it up, you knew right away. That is so very cool. The factory right down the street. In fact, they actually made a bat for us. How about that, G-Man? How cool is that? Big time. Big Made one for me, too, at a game yeah. I did here earlier. I got it sitting in my closet. I have a couple back at the Chateau, as a yeah. matter of fact. And, uh, Love it. There was a time when I did play the game with a Louisville Slugger, but it was a bamboo bat, and I broke too many of them. Uh, there we uh, go. Yeah, look at that. A we new, got a fashion change. Yes. He decided to go all with the pom I, I don't know why he didn't bring pom-poms with it. Thankfully, he, he decided to make the change. Buzzes, as we said before, you would never know what to expect. Breath of fresh air to the game, and a quick foul. It goes against Hadim C. Well, we went from jacket 
to that, <laughs> to getting hit with a fire hose. Oh, it's beautiful. To this. I still believe it's the late showers that he takes just before game time that spawns the sweat. I really do. 44-43. Let's see what happens here. Will the defenses improve, Mike? That's the question, right? Well, they just, well, yeah, or, yeah, for more importantly, for Louisville, can they get some turnovers and can they cover out on the three point shot? Really, ooh, slow walk, yep. Pivot foot slipped on him. If you look at our game summary, Mitchell perfect in the game, but interestingly, he was 5 of 5 in the first 5 18 of the first half. Mike did not take another shot. There you see Until the, the 14-42 had gone by in the first half. Yeah, the two big numbers, the turnovers right there, and then the uh, three-point shooting for the for the Hokies. And uh, I, w I, would, I would suspect, Tim, that Donovan Mitchell will be a lot more assertive offensively in the second half. Another three ball, this one for Outlaw. Those dropped steadily in the first half. And Mitchell goes right to the rack this time and is fouled. And it's Adim C again, his third. Second, I beg your pardon. Not his third. And uh, Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame with a win over NC State keeps themselves up near the top. Jim Laranaga just year in, year out. And it's been a heartbreaking year for Clemson this year. So many close losses. Beecham had 27 in that win for Notre Dame. A lot of people wondering, I think, Mike, about not just the timing, but also. Mark Godfrey's willingness to work at the rest of the year and Debbie Yao allowing that I was uh, at NC State. I was a little surprised at that Tim, to be honest. I just I just think it puts everybody in a very awkward position. Players, you're getting asked about it all the time. You're getting interviewed about it all the time. He's got to face the fire. You know, I've, something tells me that if Bobby Lutz was still on that staff, yep. that, that, that would not be the circumstance. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened. Yep, good point. Again, that dribble drive leads to an opportunity, and that little two drop does fall for Ahmed Hill. But at least in that road, when they got in rotation, the, the closeout, the X out was much better, and they forced a drive instead of an open three. Justin Robinson, G Man, has done a great job yep. with those dribble drives and kickouts. And the lane just opened like the Red Sea there for Jalen Johnson, and the youngster from Ypsilanti, Michigan, puts it through. Well, we can't understate the loss of Chris Clark and what he meant to this team. No and question. How, how big a hit that was. We hadn't talked about it. The unfortunate injury, torn his ACL. But you know, fortunately, a sophomore, he's going to have a chance to come back. But he was a big part of what they did. Well, he's fourth on the team in scoring. The team leader on a rebounding club that really had struggled somewhat. And there you see yet another answer from deep from Justin Bibbs. 49-47, two and a half gone by here in the second. Uh, this, is, this is almost getting to be like a Hoosier situation for Buzz Williams. <laughs> yes, it is. And manpower. How about that for Snyder? You know, so you have to put chairs out on the floor during <laughs> practice to dribble around. It's testament to this group. Well, it was true for all of his teams at Marquette. It's true now. There were some of those clubs that struggled to get to 40 points in a game. Now he's doing it with guys that know how to score. And from a defensive standpoint, you take what comes your way. The circumstances being what they are. Bibbs couldn't get that one to fall. Mitchell! Everything but the finish. And that's going to be an offensive foul. So a player control foul. It goes against Matthew Ang. And don't forget the 2017 New York Life ACC Tournament. The Barclays Center in Brooklyn all begins on Tuesday, March the 7th. And it's the 35th year that we have had it for you. Check out the ACC.com slash ACC Network TV. Can't, sit, can't wait to sit in the co-pilot seat next year. Yeah, that'll that. be fun. In the afternoon sessions. First time that uh, you and I have been able to work together through the entire bulk of the ACC tournament. This is what's been happening when Robinson's had the ball. He's created open looks for his teammates and tie outlaw from the elbow gets that one to go 
All right, Outlaw has been a very quiet killer in this game. He's got 13 points. He's only taken six shots, knocked down three threes. Loose ball and looking. Once again, Robinson makes the play. Tie ball with the arrow on this end of the floor, so Louisville will keep it. See, I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, he just went down. And see, you didn't get possession, but you got the arrow back. But that he didn't try to call for a timeout because I don't believe in those plays in the second half, burning a timeout this early just to get possession of the ball. Yeah, you know, see the great coaching and, and excitement level from Buzz being what it is for a kid like Robin, Robinson, who's really playing at a high level today. There's a straight line drive for Jalen Johnson. Tied at 51. Yeah, and right before the TV timeout, he gets Robinson to the bench. Again, massaging minutes is what Buzz is up to because he can only go too deep into his bench. Right, he, you know, you, he had Galloway out there for a little bit early on. I doubt you'll see that uh, much in the second half. It's going to be more substitutions around the TV timeouts. Lede. That one knocked away by Mitchell. Great hustle play, and even Buzz appreciated it. Patted him on his derriere. Three ties, team lead changes. An outstanding ACC tilt. And averaging uh, just under four points a game, and uh, already he's knocked down five of six from the floor and uh, 13 points for him. Uh, he has been absolutely outstanding in this game, and that's just in 20 minutes of action. I got to tell you, against a team like Louisville that prides itself on its perimeter defense, you know, I can't imagine a team coming in that's only seven deep that would have only turned the ball over, Mike, three times in the game. The guard play for Buzz Williams' club today has been exemplary. Well, and that's the, that's the thing that, uh, you know, now in an ill-advised pass there, just when you were talking about timeouts and yeah. turnovers, but... Um, you know, to, to come in and give a, a team this much confidence in your building, it's tough to overcome. McMahon trying to oop to Mahmoud. Good presence of mind to get it out to Dang Adele. And Mahmoud tries to save it, but it goes into the hands of Ahmed Hill. Two on three break, and it's a block. Count it, and one. Buzz's team is playing tough, tenacious. And I was a little surprised that he took this win all the way. He's been a little quiet today, scoring the basketball, 11 points. And uh, But um, that was like a one-on-three break. Yeah. And still put his head down, went right at him. He missed all of last year, this kid, with what was determined to be a patella tendon tear. Required surgery. Made a huge difference, though, for Buzz Williams to have him. But, you know, Buzz will tell you, he's got the best motor on his squad, and that's saying quite a lot. We talked about that Virginia win. Played 44 of 45 yeah. minutes in that game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. When you talk about teams outside the top 25, a lot of the country just does, does not understand how good they are. That's a three ball, and we got a foul off the ball, so we could have a yeah, three count plus it. a foul. Yeah, yes. Gets count. McMahon gets, gets the three. Plus the foul off the ball means this could be a five-point trip. Well, Lede, and Lede gets called for the foul. There's the look. And I tell you what, McMahon has come in and given this oh, team a big issue. Talk yep. about a young man playing with a lot of confidence right now. And that story today that I mentioned, uh, Steve Jones, now they've got a chance to get two or three more here. This could be a five- or six-point trip. This story that ran today on McMahon was magnificent. As I said, sort of a, a lost art in today's sports journalism is to see an uplifting feature story on game day. This kid has been nothing short of amazing. Mahmoud comes away with a rebound. He's going to trigger it again. Well, the whole thing there, we talked about the big difference, second chance points and offensive rebounding. That's what Mahmoud makes that play. And uh, McMahon just playing fearlessly right now. Six-point trip all from McMahon. The youngster from Sarasota.
that Dickie V told Rick Patino about. No other Division I school was recruiting him. His younger, his older brother played soccer for Vital's son-in-law. And he said, you got to come see this kid. Patino did, and it's delivering in trays today in the Commonwealth. In one possession for Ryan McMahon. With Tim, he's played seven minutes in this ball game. You can make an argument it's been Louisville's best seven minutes so far this afternoon. And when you score nine points in seven minutes, three of four from three, I mean, this, this young man has earned more playing time. His dad played hoops. His father, Dave, played at Valparaiso, the old home to the Drew family. And this kid has been a quick draw for the Cards since overtime at Syracuse. And that's going to be a block. It goes against Dang Adele. Now, I think down, down at the other end, down at this end, that McMahon is guarding Bibbs. And Bibbs has got a big size advantage there. I'd like to get the ball in his hands and try to attack him a little bit. By the way, McMahon and Mitchell are a collective seven of eight from three. And on this end of the floor, Bibbs and Outlaw, a collective six of seven from downtown. And as Lede takes it inside, he's fouled. See, and that's his advantage against Mahmoud, uh, who's uh, obviously a little bit more fleet of foot. But um, but Lede can he can take him off the drive, and he can force fouls. Nobody got into the penalty in that first half. It's going to be critical for Virginia Tech to get into the penalty early if they can. Two fouls against Mahmoud. Nice dump to Lede. Everything but the finish. It was right there. The, the length of Mahmoud that time bothered that shot. You wouldn't. It's not a block, but it should count as a block because he was looking for him. Mahmoud's willingness to handle and then set picks like that one for Mitchell. That's just a dribble handoff, which acts as a pick as well. And it's 59-53. That. Leaves Louisville with an eight to nothing run on a six point lead. And the crowd into it, Tim, and I think the, I, I, I bet you they thought today was going to be a gimme, and uh, it's turned to be anything but. So the crowd has come alive. Lede again, and he walked. Well, Buzz has that self absorbent. Uh, T-shirt working for Virginia Tech. Seems calm, cool, and collected, though his team has fallen behind by six. But the way the game is played, six points means zero in a game like this. Wow. You know, Louisville led by ten. That was their largest lead in the first half, and it was quickly erased. Both uh, both teams sitting at four, uh, four personal fouls right now. So, again, inching toward the uh, quickly toward the penalty. Justin Robinson just got that foul on the bump. His third. First player for either team with three fouls. Adele, Mahmoud, Jalen Johnson, McMahon, and Donovan Mitchell, the five on the floor for Patino's team. Tim, only one, uh, only one three-point basket for Virginia Tech in this second half so far. Yep. Adele with a teardrop that's woefully short. And then one. Give credit to Johnson. He knew where it was, that it was going to be short, took advantage, and will have a chance at an old-fashioned three-point play. So the lead is back to eight. And Johnson will try to convert it right here. Yeah, that was, that's just going to be a, an area all afternoon and the rest of this game where Louisville's going to have a huge advantage. The missed shot, second chance opportunity so far, 21-0 to zero in this game, Tim. Seth Allen drops it through. I love the way he follows his own shot. I mean, even when it looks good, he is following it every time. Gives himself a chance at an offensive rebound. Yeah, I'll disagree with you as a shooter. <laughs> to me, that's a negative image. That means you think you're going to miss and you're going to get a rebound. High lob for Mahmoud. It's taken away by Lede. Well, you'd know. 
That was just my philosophy. Yeah, that is. Uh, <laughs> I followed other guys' shots. I didn't follow mine. Well, Allen decided to not follow that one because he was absolutely sure. Right, yeah, he knew. And that just when you just when it seemed like this game was going to get away from Virginia Tech, they just come and fight right back. Nine to ten points in a game like today's means very little. Take a look around the ACC. You see some of the scores that Mike uh, mentioned earlier. Miami. And it's brought to you by Flonase Sensimist. So well, you got Notre Dame now is sitting at 10 wins, so they're staying close to the top of the pack. Miami right in the middle at 8 and 6. Uh, the, the bottom four, Duke is just, uh, starting to assert itself, uh, shooting very well in that game. Well, it's, it, with that with that bottom game, it's going to be a tough uh, road game for Virginia to pull off. North Carolina, we'll see how much the Kenny Williams effect yeah. has on that team. But I think as long as Theo Pinson is healthy, they're in good shape. I would agree. Inside Johnson. Feeds for three, and there it is from Snyder. 65-59, length of the floor, Mahmoud breaks it up. Numbers for Mitchell. Donovan with a finger roll. And it rolls off the heel. Robinson's been outstanding. He has just been a facilitator all afternoon long. Seth Allen wants to take it, and he will. Count it. They're having real trouble, Louisville is, double, uh, guarding that two-man game up front. Mahmoud kind of caught in the middle, and uh, he's, uh, they're not getting over the screener. The combination of Seth Allen's strength shooting the ball and the facilitating ability of Robinson has just been dynamite for the Hokies. Nice drop step maneuver, but a rejection, but foul. Lede will be guilty of the personal. Five different Hokies with threes today. This is some fun, isn't it? Sure, it's your first round draft pick for car insurance. Well, this is a look at how Seth Allen works. And look at the spacing that Virginia Tech gets. It opens up driving lanes for everybody. And then this is just a great individual move at the end. A pump fake scoring against uh, four Virginia players. And in this game, though, it's uh, he's been living on the perimeter a little bit more, Tim. He's been knocking down threes. Four of five from behind the arc. Five of eight overall. 17 points is about as efficient as you want to get. It's amazing to think of this, but Virginia Tech, you see the run here and the numbers today from three. They've made, Mike, 16 of their last 19 field goals and yet trail in this game by three. <laughs> I mean, that should tell you the level of efficiency on both sides, really. See, I knew that, I knew that self-absorbing shirt for Buzz. <laughs> wasn't He's got the towel now as well as the shirt. We're getting down to the last 10 minutes. This is like uh, the back beautiful. nine of Augusta on indeed, Sunday. Indeed. <laughs> I used to love those before and after shots of Roly Massimino when he was coaching, and I think the modern-day version of that might be Buzz, even though he doesn't have the professor, the late professor Erwin Corey hair going. He got rid of that problem. 67 to 62. You know Allen wants to launch it whenever he gets a little bit of space, and this is the guy that's created it all day long, Robinson. Lede drives right by Mahmoud and is fouled. Well, it was interesting. In that situation, Tim, a lot of times a team will bring up one high screen at the end of the clock. Virginia Tech had two up there, so he had a couple of options, and uh, Lede gets the ball, and... Made a nice drive to his right hand. Redshirt senior from Dallas, Texas. Transfer from South Florida. This young man, his emergence aided this club big time at the end of last year. And it just carried through into this season. I mean... I mean, his double-figure numbers are through the roof. In 24 of his 25 games, 
He's been in double figures. Got his 400th career rebound against Notre Dame earlier in the year. More importantly, he's had double doubles two of the last three, which yeah. have gone a long way and they have let them get the, those signature wins that they've needed over Pitt and uh, Virginia. Mathieng, good ball fake and a deuce. The crowd got a little tense when Mathieng got to his third dribble, but he was able to convert the play. 69-64. 2 3 matchup zone now for Louisville. There's Allen, and that's three. See, I, you come off of a double team. I, you know, you can leave anybody, but you can't leave number four right now. I mean, he's killing you. You've got to put somebody in his shirt and, and let him stay there. We've seen a lot of basketball this year, G-Man, but this has been as entertaining offensively a game as I've seen. On the wing, the three ball. Oh, the iron really kind. Dang, Adele rings one up. And who would you think, Timmy, would you ever thought this year that you would have said an entertaining basketball game in this arena yeah. by a visiting team? Absolutely. It's one of the best defensive teams in the country. It's just amazing. And if you don't think Virginia Tech is ready for prime time, then you haven't been paying attention. Allen with five on the clock. Oh! The rainbow flows in the Commonwealth, 72 to 70. Well, it was it was interesting that um, Rick Pitino was yelling at his team, and uh, you know Matthew Ang pointed down the, almost on the other side of half court, saying he shot it from here. Adele and one. Allen gets the foul. Here's the look, and he, he just got lost. We see the double team right there, and, uh, you know, he's, he's just laughing, and, 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 you know, Johnson just kept on backing up and backing up. And, hey. You know, if you're a big in that situation, Tim, come out and crowd him. Give up the drive. You know you're going to get beat. Let me tell you, without a really good handheld cameraman, that ball would have gone out of the frame. <laughs> he put that one up in the stratosphere, that last three ball that we witnessed. Meanwhile, though, Adele with a chance to build the lead to five, but he doesn't get it to go. Allen is now five of five from downtown. All threes here in the second half. You know, Virginia Tech at this point has got to be thinking, what, what do we have to do to get a lead in this game? Walk. Yeah. And yeah, Buzz a little frustrated with Lede there. A little too much ball handling by his post player. Well, you're going to have two number fours going at it because I think they put Snyder on Allen and say, do not leave him. <laughs> you think Rick has had yeah. enough of that? Yeah. Watching Allen drain tray after tray. Snyder. Well, number four is uh, doing his job for Louisville just as number four is for Virginia Tech. 77 to 70. Look at that scoring. Incredible. What a show. And seven points means very little in a game like this. And we'll be back after this word from your local ACC station. Some may wonder why the Atlantic Coast Conference has a chance to reach or perhaps pass the old configured Big East when they had 11 teams get into the NCAAs, a record number back in 2011. But when you watch Virginia Tech's play today on this floor against a team that prides itself on defense, you know why. And by the way, on this court named after Denny Crum, happy to say the 80-year-old is on hand watching Patino's team. Great to talk with him before the game today. What a treat. 77 to 70 after the fifth turnover committed today by Virginia Tech. Only the fifth. And a little early shot, but that was, you know, the one thing, even though it was a turnover, it allowed Virginia Tech to get back and get their defense set. 
Allen. The leaping leaner won't go. Yeah, that's, see, that's terrific. A great defense. Just drive him off the three-point line. Come flying at him under, you know, under control. Make him put it on the floor. And Patino's trying to tighten up that uh, vice around the three-point line that's been so good for him all year long. That one goes crying off the front iron for Quentin Snyder. Outlaw gives it up to Allen. The ball movement's been the key, and Robinson's been the engine, number five for Virginia Tech. Allen kick and rolls to Lede and a foul underneath. Okay, he may be a lot smaller than the bigs he's going up against today, but Zach Lede is going to get his numbers well, no matter what. Then, but they, Louisville right now much more concerned, Rick Pitino concerned with his bigs, especially when Lede is in the pick and roll, staying with the shooter and giving up that layup and taking their chances with him at the free throw line. Spalding the foul, his first. And Lede at the line. A lot of minutes played for him. He struggled at times to score, but he has certainly passed the ball beautifully, and that's another great strength of his game, averaging 15 points a game, but also an outstanding passer of the basketball. Seventy-seven, seventy-two. Snyder remains on the floor with Spalding. Matthew Mitchell, and Dang Adele. Adele pulls up. Pulled down by Allen, and he lost it to Mitchell, and then quickly a frustration foul. Uh, Patrick Adams had called it slipped on the deck. So still and, one uh, and one, and that was yeah. a, you know, again, I, I thought Louisville had had a couple of loose possessions. That was a questionable shot, but the offensive rebound, and that's just, that's just Mitchell out fighting Seth Allen for the ball. Yeah. So it'll be a one and one. Tough part for that is that Seth Allen just committed his fourth foul. And Patrick Adams went over to get the ball and then slipped on the perspiration where the two players had fallen down and I, I thought maybe it, he could have hyperextended his uh, his knee and so Seth will sit down for a brief time here with the four fouls I think you um, I, I think depending how this next you try to get it under the four minute TV timeout before Allen get back, gets yeah, back in yeah okay. see, see if you can survive this little stretch without Louisville stretching out the game and any, any you know any more in a lot of ways even without the fourth foul, he was probably thinking about getting him some time off the bench. Do we have a, a lane violation here? Foul. I think there's a foul. No, no there, there is lane a lane violation. violation. Wow. Well, that's, when you're undersized like Lede, that's what it forces you to do. You have to, you know, jump it a little bit and try to get in early on the block out. So it's still one and one on that lane violation with Mitchell at the free throw line. Second chance points is that that's one stat that's been all Louisville. They've outscored Virginia Tech 21 to nothing in putback opportunities. And in, in essence, this is a dead ball second chance opportunity. You, you, you're talking about what you know, what you miss in Allen. What it allows Louisville now is to really concentrate on some other players out on the perimeter. You don't have to really lock in on him. Let's see if there's somebody who steps up. Oh wow! Did we get another foul? Wow, Buzz can't believe this. Lede got another. First a violation, then a quick foul. You talk about that plus the six-point trip for Ryan McMahon. I mean, mark this one down. This sequence plus when they got the foul off the that ball. Was, that wasn't a foul, Tim. Huh? That was another a, lane that, violation. That was a lane violation. Yeah, they're still sitting at nine. So well, that was two two lane violations. Two lane violations back to back. And I thought they got foul. Oh, they got Lede with a foul. Thank you for that. 78-72. Well, the good news is Lede is playing well on this end of the floor, and that's going to get him into double digits for the day yet again. So his streak will continue.
Well, I made a call timeout. Remember now, when you're when you're holding the ball, the five second count is in play, yeah. and they were close that time, so they had to burn an unnecessary timeout with four five forty to go. And the other good news is Lede did not pick up those that extra foul underneath. A reminder. Coming up Tuesday, 8 Eastern, most will see NC State of Georgia Tech. Two of the great freshmen in the country on hand, Dennis Smith Jr. and Josh Okoge. Yeah. For the entire ACC Network game schedule, visit the ACC.com slash ACC Network. The news around NC State, obviously, a very difficult circumstance for Mark Gottfried, whose team won at Cameron, hasn't won since. And um, you look at his body of work over the five years. Mike, I know there were certainly issues the past two seasons, and particularly with the loss of Bobby Lutz on his staff, not adequately replacing him. But I would also suggest to you that North Carolina State is going to have a very difficult time fulfilling that vacancy because, you know, they got Mark out of coaching exile. He was doing television work, and that job was offered to a number of people even then. There is a slam. For Matthew A. He did take him to two sweet 16s in five years. Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see how that all uh, plays out. Uh, a couple names floated out there, Archie Miller already, but, uh, you know, that's, that'll work itself out. Low bye by Lede again, and the foul underneath by Matthew A. Well, here's the look, and it's a it's a great face up, and it for you know Lede, he's kind of an isle, on an island down there, but Matthew Ang was, you know, was wide open on that beautiful pass. I thought Mitchell was very patient on that play. Two fouls on Matthew Ang. This is uh, interesting. You got almost a you got a, a, a free timeout. There's nobody on the line right now with Lede shooting, but all four other players were over with Buzz Williams. Taking advantage of every millisecond available to him, Buzz. By well, the way, that Wake Forest to Duke game is now a seven point game. 88 81 with 45. John Collins, 28, who I think has played his way into first team consideration. I would agree with that. Uh, I mean, I've seen I mean, him enough. Yeah, I mean, he is outstanding. Kid can play. Boy, can, can Danny Manning coach Biggs? Yeah. I mean, he just makes his Biggs better. A lot of people thought when he lost Devin Thomas, they would struggle. He answered the call. No question about that. 80 to 76 with under five to play. May take 100 to win this one. Not there, but the tip in goes by Jalen Johnson. Twenty-four to zero in second chance points for Louisville. It's only been the uh, Virginia Tech three-point shooting that has been able to overcome that, and that's dried up a little bit with Allen out. But, oh, uh, ho, ho, ho. another tray for Outlaw. Man, he's shooting 37% coming in today, and he has been It didn't take a lot. It. No. But four of five from three on the afternoon. Amazing. Adele. Looking for some help and find some. Down low to Johnson again. Well, Virginia Tech's just depleted in that area. If you keep going down low, they should deliver. Another three doesn't fall. Lede had it. Had it knocked away, though. Adele leads the break. Numbers three on two. Snyder. Tapped out. Saved. By Matthew. Yeah, they're getting all the 50-50 balls right now, Tim. Alley oop and a slam, hammer style. JJ with the big time payday. Timeout, Virginia Tech. Listen to this crowd in Louisville. Put it up and slam it home. Some entertaining game today. Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Hardee's. By PNC Bank. 
and by Haviland, official motor oil of the ACC. You could say that elevating the ACC is what Louisville has done since joining the conference. Mike, I for one love the college basketball environment no matter where I am. But this is one of my favorite stops in the entire game. And you can see why Rick Pitino has chosen to stay here as long as he has. And uh, look at that. I mean, you just don't see numbers like that in the game today for both teams. Seth Allen with that extra pass, but Mitchell reaching in will pick up the foul. By the way, talking about shooting, if you were wondering how long it's been since Louisville gave up this many threes, it's been over 10 years. Notre Dame on February 4th of 2006 had 17 against Louisville. Today, Virginia Tech has 16 with uh, three plus minutes remaining. So they have a chance to tie the all time record of threes against Louisville. Well, the key number for Virginia Tech right now is that they are out of timeouts, Tim, with 318 to go. So Buzz Williams is going to have to massage this one to the end without any calls and uh, that's why he had that kind of yep. you know, he'll be having more of those conferences on the sideline he may be rooting for fouls right so he get those opportunities to chat with his playmakers well this is this is definitely a stretch now that uh, Louisville is going to be defending outside in I mean they're going to be covering up the three-point line and they'll live with whatever happens in behind it You know, Rick Pitino would like to see all in his last three minutes then get a couple of turnovers maybe some plays in the open floor you know Virginia Tech has to play a lot of that matchup zone and and he understands that with that in mind they can go get extra opportunities on the glass and Mitchell make sure they don't have to worry about it it's an eight-point game well we touched on him at the very outset of our broadcast how hot he's been and he is still scorching Lede bumped will get to the line after the foul on Johnson. Well, I tell you what, Tim. I don't know if you agree with me. This may be. We touched on. You know, I called out John Collins and first team All ACC. Yeah. This may be as tough a year to pick five out of that group. Agreed. As in, yeah. in recent memory. A lot of people around the country may not have been aware of Zach Lede upon his transfer to Virginia Tech. Regardless of the outcome of this game, they're going to find out a lot about him in March because this team is headed to the NCAAs. The thing that impresses me, I mean, he's, he's 10 of 11 from the free throw line, and to be able to draw fouls against yep. the bigger front line of Louisville not easy to do yeah he's 76 percent on the season so when he gets there he's going to convert more often than not still a two possession game with two and change remaining Mitchell again all the way yet another tip and it's pulled down by Lede a little deliberate on that last possession trying to run some clock Robinson trying to deal inside to Allen the cutter but it was knocked away off really the back of Johnson yeah. Johnson Robinson will trigger it in and keep in mind too that there, if there's any uh, any thought or discussion of it that's a reviewable play in the last two minutes of the game so any out of bounds play can be looked at Look out for Mitchell. Look out for him. Lede claims it. Wow, Seth Allen awfully lucky on that play. That looked like Mitchell had that one teed up. Dribble handoff. Pick and roll to Lede. A thing of beauty. Yeah, but you know what? It wasn't a three by Allen. They had that. that was, anything else was going to happen but that. 89-85. 18-6 for Zach, who's having a wonderful Lede. That's see it is I mean it's you know the best basketball is the simplest basketball and it, this is this is a two-man game this is jump out you roll pick and roll two points the help is late getting there defensively 
Uh, to your point, we were discussing Seth Allen, what a marvelous player he is. The se senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. The Maryland transfer has made a lot of big shots this week. How about on Sunday against Virginia? He hit the game winner with 3.2 seconds left in the second OT. And then two days later, a big shot with a minute left to give the Hokies the come from behind win. And in a lot of ways, I think the committee is as impressed, even though Pitt's having a down year, with the ability to sustain success. You beat an in-state rival in your own conference, then you go on the road. That game against Pitt, I believe, is as effective as the one against Virginia. Any any road win in the conference this year is going to be looked at as a good a good win. Absolutely. 21 of their last 26 field goals, and yet down by four with 90 seconds left. Shot clock at 10 with Donovan Mitchell in control of it. Matthew Yang gives it back to Mitchell, falling away. Off the front iron, but Jalen Johnson with another recycle. Just the killer, the awesome defense that time by Virginia Tech, and they get another 30 seconds. Don't need it, but Matthew Yang will take it. Did not need it, though. Uh, and Rick Patino did not want that shot at that point. He wanted more clock run. Robinson deals. Does he ever? All the way. Short-armed it. Out of bounds off Louisville. Virginia Tech will keep it. Boy, Robinson did everything except convert. Well, there. the thing you can't do is... Well, now they're going to. What happens now, and this really helps Virginia Tech. You get to they're going to go. Out. They're going to go yep. look at whether that ball, who it was out of bounds off of. Now, if it didn't, if they didn't have to look at it, Virginia Tech would have to run this play without a timeout. Now, with that play, they're able to go over and draw something up. Yeah, and I understand why they want to look at it, but I don't think they're going to find anything definitive. Tim Nestor had this call correct. It looked it, uh, did it, it looked like Johnson coming right there. Yep. Right there was Jaylen the last Johnson. one to touch it. Not from that angle, you don't, but from the angle we saw from the midcourt from behind, there was nothing definitive there to overturn this, in, in my opinion. And as you, as you stated, the, the biggest aspect of this stoppage is what it does for Virginia Tech in terms of setting up an out-of-bounds play. Yep. But by rule, there's nothing Patino can say or do about it. It's in the rule book, and it, it stems, and, think, and it's a great rule. Yeah, I think, I, I think it was a, a one that needed to be implemented. And But, uh, you know, sometimes it works to your advantage. Sometimes it doesn't work to your advantage. Roger Ayers and Tim Nestor taking a long look at it. I <laughs> think... Patino knows the eventual outcome, I think, and that's one of the reasons why he's disturbed. But you yeah, know, that's that's the that's the thing. I mean, what now? It gets you an extra timeout, but what if the call is overturned? <laughs> <laughs> well, our performance of the game is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers, and how about his game today? Well, I I thought he really gave his team a spark at the first ten minutes of the game, and uh, but very deserving and. As expected, the call is confirmed, and Virginia Tech controls. They have length on the inbounder. End to end again. Robinson comes out of there with it. Working on Snyder. 24 to shoot, 30 to play. From way downtown. Not there. Loose ball taken down by Snyder, and a quick foul given up. Well, Bibbs had to put it up. They needed a quick three. It was going to take two possessions, and now you extend the game by putting Clinton Snyder at the line, and all he can do is still continue a two-possession game, even if he makes both shots. Yeah, and uh, what you do now, for if you're Louisville, you know, regardless of what happens here, you come down, you put five defenders in the three-point line, don't foul. 
try to yeah, I wouldn't be, be surprised if there was a little fake pressure up front just to run a little bit of clock off it you know just on the front end the old rag the ball routine yeah yeah, yeah. the defender rags the ball handler to make sure that he has to work to get the ball up the floor and that's what Mitchell's going to do Everything is switch out on the perimeter. Allen. Oh, my goodness. The iron unkind, but it's pulled down by Lede. They swing it out for three to Outlaw. He cans it. It's 91 to 88. 7.4, a one possession game. And we got a quick foul. Oh, it's a intentional foul. Oh, boy. And Buzz can't believe that. Well, that ruins any opportunity that you really had. Yeah, that was a, a foul off of the not, not at the ball, and uh, actually Snyder had broken free on the other side. It was Lede that got the foul, and you you just have to make sure that it's not intentional. Beautiful three. I mean, clearly, you want to give up a foul, but you yeah, don't yeah, want it to be an intentional foul. Well, not making a play on the ball. Yeah. And Lede feels badly about it, obviously. He just wrapped him up. No play on the ball. Yeah, well, it's, it's almost when you're, you know, it's a roll of you, Johnson's 62%, so it's a roll of the dice that he's going to miss both of them. He was doing what was instructed, but the rule as it states is he must be making the play on the ball. He was not, therefore, Roger Ayers with the correct intentional foul call. And that also means the ball out of bounds to Louisville. Yeah, so Buzz Williams trying to get his team to, you know, go for the steal foul as quickly as he can, making a play on the ball. Part of that can be communication issues, too. You don't have a timeout. You're trying to shout to your guys what you want. And, and they take and they and now they've got Johnson, the, the poorest of the free throw shooters out there, as their inbounder. All right, some game today. Our many thanks to Rob Likely, our producer, director Gary Clem, our entire Raycom sports team. This one has been a joy to broadcast. And Mitchell quickly fouled again. Robinson picks up his fifth, and he's done for the day. But what a performance, Mike, by Justin Robinson. The kid from Manassas, Virginia, gave everything and then See, some. Here's another thing I don't agree with. You know, when a player fouling out, that it becomes a free timeout, and it should. And I believe in this situation, you know, you should have X amount of time to get you in, which you do, but you shouldn't be able to meet with your coach. And I don't think a guy fouling out warrants you getting a free, a free timeout. And one of the issues that we discuss all the time about college basketball is how long it takes to play the last couple of minutes. And that's something the rules committee can take a look at. I agree with you. But who would, if you had asked Buzz Williams that, all right, you, we're going to come in today and we're going to shoot 17 of 26 from three and score 88 points. Yeah. You think that he would have thought maybe that's enough. Right. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> All right. Very quietly, Ryan McMahon has come back onto the floor, number 30. And in terms of minutes played and effectiveness, <laughs> number 30 in white, what a day for him again, huh? Nine points, nine minutes, three of four from three. Unreal. Just unreal. This young man from Sarasota has become a star in Louisville. Well, Mitchell knocks them both down. 94 to 88. Length of the floor. Allen's going to throw one in as quickly as he can. At point four. And that will do it. Well, for highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, we invite you to check out the ACC.com. Magnificent performance by Rick Patino's team. They get their 22nd win of the year, 10 and 4 in the ACC. Our next broadcast on most of the ACC stations takes place with Georgia Tech and NC State on Tuesday. You've been watching coverage of the Atlantic Coast Conference basketball on the ACC Network. For Mike Jeminski, this is Tim Brando saying so long from Louisville. An exclusive production of Raycom Sports.